Welcome back to Switch to Linux. Well, today we want to take a little bit of time to have a look at the Makulu core distribution. And uh, Makulu, I first saw a couple years ago when they had something that very closely modeled a Windows 10 look. And I thought it was kind of neat. And I actually took the time and built a virtual box based on Makulu that was very much looked exactly like Windows 10. Uh, they had some neat philosophies on how they run things, uh, but they actually have a couple of different, uh, different installs. And this is something I didn't recognize, so I'm not sure if everyone else did or not. So if you head on over to Makulu's website, they have a few different things. They have Core, they have Flash, and they have the Lindos. So I haven't seen the Lindos one. The Flash is more of the Makulu that we're probably all familiar with. It kind of has a layout that looks like a Windows type layout. You know, they have a panel on the bottom, they have our task managers, um, our windows, our icons, all this kind of stuff. But what we're gonna look at today is this new one called Core. It's not brand new, but it is certainly a, a, newer, a newer model. And what they're doing with the Core distro is they are trying to do a system that kind of is the opposite of GNOME where GNOME wants to focus on keyboard shortcuts, everything. This actually wants to focus on uh, on touchscreen and mouse, no keyboards. So there's some features I won't be able to show you because they're kind of the like touchscreen based, like the gesture touchscreen based. Um, I'll show you where they are and how to configure them, but we can't do them because I don't have a touchscreen on this particular computer here. Um, but what we're gonna do is we're, we will go ahead and look at core and I'm going to show you the different types of menus and things. Now we're going to do this in a virtual box, which will work just fine. Um, it's not the absolute uh, best, but it will, uh, it will certainly work for us. So I'm going to go ahead and boot this guy up and then we will have a look at what it looks like. All right. So when we first launch up, now I've already installed this. There's some things I like about it. There's some things I don't like about it. Uh, so first let's go ahead and get our system set up here. Um, so the first thing that I found out of the box is uh, it does not boot into full screen. And if you come over to our um, settings and go into your display, then it actually, the display's not setting. This might just be an artifact of the virtual box. So we're just going to um, go ahead and, and manually set the screen size in the terminal. There we are. Now we're full screened. All right, so what we have with Makulu, um, like I said, the um, there are gestures on here. If I had a touch screen, I could do a series of gestures and uh, inside of your settings manager for Makulu, we have uh, the gesture recognition. So these are the gestures that you can use. I can't do them. I can't pull them off with a mouse. I've tried. Um, I'd need either a touch screen to, do, to pull these off. But you can set um, various applications, you know, terminal, home, uh, a variety of different, uh, different tools. You can go ahead and set all of those. As far as your appearance, um, there's uh, this is based on XFCE, so you have kind of the XFCE feel uh, to how the appearance is going to look. Uh, here's your desktop, so you have uh, wallpapers and things. Um, the things that I wanted to look at specifically, the first is the web applets. So the web applets kind of allow you to have these web applets move to the top of the screen. Now, what I found is that best I can tell, and I can't find any documentation on this, you cannot actually edit or change these. You can add a few custom ones to the edge, but you can't edit or change these ones that are here. So nearly everything up here, I would never use in a million years. I would love this feature if I could customize all of these pre-existing and pre-populated ones. So we're just going to go ahead and click no to turn that off. Uh, we also have a wallpaper changer. So the wallpaper changer on this is just really nice. So we have the ability here to, um, let me just close this out, put that at the bottom there. So we have the ability to find wallpapers. One of the things about Makulu is they put so much into the theming. It just looks absolutely beautiful. Uh, this is just one of the great things about it. Um, and so this, these wallpapers that they have, they're just, they're just beautiful. They're awesome. Let's just go ahead and find one and, and kind of stick with it. All right. So 
now here with, with this, of course, we looked at the web apps. Uh, we have the Windows Manager. Um, so now you'll see the wallpaper thing is still up there. We have to come down into here, right click and hit wallpaper changer. So everything in the menu toggles on, toggles off. We can do 3D on, we can do 3D off. I found 3D on, at least in the virtual box, messes with things, so we're not gonna do that. Now, as far as the gesture base, you'll notice that there's no main, me uh, no main menu here, but if you go down to the bottom of the screen, it actually pulls up, pulls it up just with a hot corner. So it kind of pulls this up, and you actually have the same thing if you go to the bottom of the screen, if you hit the meta key, it gives you this, the uh, this, uh, start screen kind of in, in the middle of the screen there. But what's cool is you also have another gesture in the upper right, uh, upper left corner, which gives you this menu here. So this menu here is really cool in that it just kind of gives you this type of layout. So if you are used to what you're looking for, I think this will work well. I found it to be a little confusing at first, but I can see how you can get used to it if you know where things are and what you're looking for. So it's a really cool menu system with their gestures that they have. Um, some of the things that I don't like about Mikulu uh, Core is that some of the things are not particularly intuitive. So one of the things, for example, is um, if you want to do your basic theming, um, I gotta figure out where that is. I, I don't know exactly where the uh, where the the thing is, but I found it almost all of the settings. Like you can adjust your what your windows look like, what your themes look like, and when you're doing the themes, when you're doing the uh, the install, pretty much anything, it doesn't use any forward or next or whatever buttons. You actually have to go in and close between every instance. And the best way to show you this is I'm actually going to shut the machine down and we are going to boot up into the live key. And as we boot up into the live key, um, we will look at what the installation process looks like. And that's kind of where I found that it is a little bit more confusing. So now we're going to drop the ISO in, uh, or drop the uh, yeah the uh, live key into the the drive here. And so what it's going to do is it boots up this time, is it's going to give us the option to style our windows, which is an awesome option. But it, you have to select your option and then close. And then you have to select your colors, and then instead of next, you have to close the box. But you have to do the thing, same thing to start the installer, and it is very, very unintuitive. Okay, so here we are into the live key. So you'll see here, this is where we have the option to pick the different type of window borders, which is a cool feature. I really like this feature. I think it's pretty neat. Uh, pretty slick. Uh, this one's cool. Let's go and do this one. But you'll see that uh, now I've selected it, there's no next, there's no close, there's no okay. You actually have to come up to the corner and click the corner out. And now we have to pick our colorations, which again is cool. I like this functionality. Um, but again, you have to click the close box. And maybe good, maybe not so good. I don't know. Let's go ahead and... Uh, full screen it again. Uh, so now what we'll do is we'll walk through the installation. So we have the installer over here. And if I double click on the installer, now the cool thing is it gives us this option here. Uh, so this is a neat thing. So it gives us a, a home environment, an office environment, movie streaming setup. And they don't really tell me what the difference is. I think it's just different types of packages are getting installed. I'm not completely sure. They don't really tell us what it is or what it's not. You can set your download server location. You can set um, show environment software lists. <clears throat> I guess that kind of tells us what software is in each of these environments. But now on the next step is you click continue and now we have this screen here. Literally, when I went to install this, I thought that it was downloading something. I let it sit on the screen for a good five minutes. And then I'm like, what's going on? You actually have to come up here. And it would be so cool if they have a button down here that says continue. They don't. You actually have to close this and then enter your password. And now your installer is going to start up. Well, in theory, there it is. So now our installer starts up. So of course, once the once the installer gets to this point here, it installs just the same way you would anticipate it would. Um, but I found that that process being very unintuitive, especially since everything else in the system 
uh, is so intuitive. Even so much, if you want to turn on web apps, it gives you this warning which says, hey, we don't recommend this unless you have at least four gigabytes of RAM. All right, and you can toggle it yes, no. It's awesome to see the number of things that they have put into the system that will tell you or warn you about what they're you're doing to determine if it's something you actually want to do or not. But of these basic windows, there's no next, there's no continue, there's no proceed to install. It, you have to close it, which is unintuitive because usually you hit the close button if you have nothing else to do and you think of it as terminating the application you're trying to do. And so I think that they have left a lot of confusion in the middle of it. So what's my overall take on Makulu Core? Um, overall, I think it's it's a neat system. It has a lot of functionality to, to give it, it, it's gorgeous. It has a neat icon pack. It has a neat and different and unique feel. It kind of is a cross between a full, um, uh, a full platformed, um, uh, gesture based system. So it'd be neat to test out on a uh, touch screen as well, but it also has a lot of window manager applications, you know, like uh, you can actually get to everything over here instead of having to pull up your, your menus. So you can do things like that and you can, you can set, um, you know, you can set um, gestures for getting to each of these different things as well. So we do have desktop icons. We have a nice panel over here on the left, which kind of, excuse me, on the right, which kind of stacks up. So you can kind of see where things are. Uh, we have the wallpaper switcher set up. So in theory, we can set it to change wallpapers. You can very easily uh, adjust your papers up here. So there's, there's a lot to it. It is definitely an interesting system. I kind of want to, <clears throat> I kind of want to try this out. Uh, on my desktop to see how it works because it is just so different and so unique and so beautiful. I'd like to kind of give it a try, see what it'll do. Um, as far as using it, I think almost in a way it might seem more flashy. Here's what we can do and less about uh, how usable it is. And I say this because we get things like the web apps that we can't actually edit these. Uh, in fact, if I go into the application settings to edit the uh, edit the docs, it actually will only allow us to adjust. Um, it only allows us to adjust those ones there. So if I go in and do uh, like our pixels, notice it only drops the pixel sizes of our four custom apps. It doesn't actually allow us to adjust the pixels anywhere else. So there's there's some interesting things about it, but at the time I think it seems a lot more like hey, this is kind of what we can do and a lot less about actually using it. So that's kind of my thoughts. Uh, what do you think? Tell me what you think about Makulu Core in the comments down below. Thank you for making it to the end of this Switch to Linux video. You can have a look at another video right on over here. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel or to Think Life Media, which is my own personal support page. Thank you for watching and I hope that you enjoy switching to Linux.